What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God, I'm already eating a drink. Look like a damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please no, and yes, please no. What's good, people? What's up? What's up? What's up? It is me, El Teddy 27, and I am back for yet another review. Undisclosed locations, not home, but we still doing this. We still getting it done. I'm here for y'all. I'm here for y'all. I got y'all. This is going to be our review for Candy and the Gang. It is season one. It is It is episode three. I'm not even sure what the title is. It'll be around me somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, y'all hear all of the stuff in the background. I'm in a relative's extra room, and found a way to come to y'all and bring y'all this review so that's why we're here we're here we'll make it happen we'll make it do what to do lots to talk about this um episode so we start off with philip and Torin still with their dicks out on the table measuring and sizing each other up figuring out who either has the biggest dick or the biggest purse because they don't whip both out and throw them on the table and said who's this bigger a mess now Y'all know I love me some Philip down, but Philip, you are out of order. You are completely out of order. And I think what ends up happening, like I think, I do think a good portion of this is for the show and for the cameras and salaciousness of everything that goes into the show and the cameras. But I also feel like you can't, you just can't, even if you're someone's boss, you can't talk to people that way like on a regular job you talk to someone like that hr is going to get involved you cannot be talking just like you don't want your um subordinates and your employees to talk to you any kind of way and be disrespectful likewise you cannot just be blatantly and outright rude and disrespectful it's a it's a part of your professional decorum and you preach professionalism and you preach all of these things that people should be doing on a job but you don't display that because even in your managerial style and your managerial way of doing things, the way and manner in which you approach situations is unprofessional. It's unprofessional at this point. And so um, it doesn't speak well to you as a manager. And you got to think you may not be working for Candy forever and you may try to go to the next the gig or the next manager role. And they're going to take a look at this and say, yeah, I don't know if you're the best fit for what I need. Because I can't have lawsuits and I can't have HR down my ass because you don't found a way to piss somebody off. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. So that's um, the Philip and Torrance situation. But that's out of control. Um, and what it also shows, and I'm going to talk about this a little more later, is it shows that you're not effective in your job. We'll talk about that later. Candy comes through. And so Torrin leaves. They have work. Torrin and Philip have words. You know, they do it like this. Torrin leaves and says, I'm going to go do what I got to do. And Philip goes. Torrin goes and finds Candy, who's just coming into the restaurant. Philip goes to go talk to Don Juan. Torrin tells Candy, listen, I, I can't. I can't. Mm -mm, nope. He was rude and disrespectful to me. Um, Philip goes over to Don Juan and says, nope, I can't. No, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to have nobody working for me. Dot, 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 X, Y, and Z. So, um... While Don Juan and Philip are talking, Candy comes and joins the conversation with them. And um, Philip is like, I'm not working with him. I can't work with that. Y'all gonna have to deal with him and um, da, 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 da. And Candy had to check him. Hey, bitch, I'm paying you to work with him. You are director of operations. You are gonna have to work with people that are your subordinates. Just like I have to work with you because I'm the owner and I pay you. You have to work with your subordinates as well. A mess. And so for all of the professionalism and for all of this, oh, I'm coming to write this ship and I'm the best man for the job and I can do this and I can do that. We don't see that. Because a manager is someone who, when it's necessary, you gather the girls when it's necessary, but you also know when to dial it back to get the job done. You also, if you are in the business of managing people, have to manage attitudes. You have to be able to manage people. If, if I'm hiring you as a manager, you tell me I can't work with somebody. I'm going to say I can't work with you as a manager because one of two things need to happen. Either we're recommending this person for termination or something like that or because the situation is way too out of control or you're going to fix the situation. 
But at no point are you telling me, oh, I'm just not going to ever work with this person. You don't have that option as a manager because you won't be managing that person. That's a whole nother story. Anyway, um, but she had to check him. My other question during this whole thing was, why isn't um, he involved in the hiring process or in the process of bringing, if y'all are asking him, now that is just to be devil, play devil's advocate. If you're going to ask me to manage people and you're going to ask me to be involved with the day-to-day -day and making sure people are, you know, where they're supposed to be and doing what they're supposed to be and building this culture, I also need to be involved in the process of who gets hired, when people get get hired, how we go about bringing people in. Because I do think it's a bad practice that you're bringing all of these old people back in, but you're talking about changing the culture. These are not the only people in the great city of Atlanta, okay? There are other people there that I'm sure would love to work there, are capable, available, and all of the other things that it takes to work there. But nevertheless, you over here pigeonholing yourself into only hiring people who've worked at, there before. That You can't do that. And then expect the manager to make something new when you keep giving me something old. So I do think that Philip should be involved in that hiring process. I do think that's a, that's a part of the problem as well. We then see Torin um, goes over to Patrick and Melvin's house because Patrick wants Torin to help him decorate the house uh, for housewarming and, you know, have everything, you know, um, made like he wants it, you know, souped up and all of that stuff and made uh, to feel like his place. And there wasn't a whole lot from that scene. I was like, okay, girl, Torin, you in this tool belt, girl. Girl. I mean, we still checking to see what's underneath this tool belt. Because according to Brian, I'm just saying. Anyway, back down to the restaurant. It's a, um, that we get down there. It's the middle of the lunch day rush. Do you hear me? The middle of lunch day rush. They ain't got no bartender. Now, the other thing that bothered me when I'm watching this, you're in the middle of lunch day rushes, which is one of your busy times. Every manager, unless this thing was edited the wrong way, and that sometimes happens in reality TV where what you see isn't what was actually happening at that time. But based on what they showed me, we're in the middle of the lunch rush. Managers ain't doing shit. Sitting down, walking out, walking around, doing everything in their power except managing the restaurant. Except making sure that things are flowing the way that it should. And I'm talking about from Philip on down. You got Brandon over here. Like he wanted to um, guest on lunch. He over here sitting down eating like he wanted to pay in guests on lunch. And that like that restaurant always got a line out the door. You could be taking up somebody's spot where they could be sitting. A mess. He's sitting at the bar eating. Um, Dom Unique is like well over an hour late at this point. None of the managers seem to care. Everybody's obl oblivious. The place is filthy. This shit looks so unsanitary, so filthy, so unkempt. And now I see why they have these constant violations and so forth. That place looked disgusting. And I would not listen. You don't got to worry about me going over there to eat no more. Because if they're keeping that place filthy and disgusting like that, I don't want my food nowhere around that. That shit was disgusting. I, I, I can't. It was just, I, I, mm -mm. it made me physically ill almost. And I'm just like, this is a mess. A goddamn mess. Dom Unique finally comes well over an hour late. Um, and she's like, everybody else, what's going on? This place is filthy. Brian ended up having to go back there and help serve drinks, which was, you know, a bit triggering for him. But he's doing what he got to do. Being a team player, putting in, you know, t um, effort and energy. That ain't his job. While Brandon is over here having lunch in the middle of the busiest time during the day for the restaurant. But you manage your people. And you're not making nobody accountable. You ain't trying to step in and help out. Make the shit make sense. Philip calls a manager's meeting outside. Philip tells Brandon that, you know, you seem like you ain't doing nothing. But in the same breath, you look like you ain't doing nothing either, Philip. A mess. And so Brandon could care less. Brandon ain't trying to hear nothing Philip got to say. Brandon don't want no parts of what Philip got going on and what how Philip thinks. Brandon just there to collect his money. And as he says, oversee and supervise. He don't got to do work. He just has to oversee and supervise. Which, mind you, he ain't even doing that. Anyway, um, but yeah, Brandon don't care. He ain't trying to hear it.
There was another lady. Now, this is, I think, my first time seeing this other lady. I think her name was Tamika, I think. I don't remember her name, but this is my first. She's like an interim manager, but this is my first time seeing her. And she only, she didn't really have that much to say. Um, so that was that. It was a whole shit show that day. We then see um, the, the um, employees from the restaurant. They go to the little um, bar again like they normally do. I think it was named Publico or something like that. They go to that bar and, um, you know, just to shoot the shit like they, you know, normally do. This time, Shandrika brought her boyfriend because she got tired of um, Patrick talking about his girlfriend, Safari. So, Mama brought her boyfriend. Now, we find out that the boyfriend and Patrick done had words that they, you know, done got into a whole, you know, back and forth, about to get it down situation sometime before. I was here for it. I was here for all. I was just like this. Ooh, we fighting? Ooh, rip each other clothes off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and take your shirt off. Mm -hmm. Flex for him. Let him know you. I, that's what I, I was kind of here for. <laughs> I was. Don't judge me. Anyway, so, um, Shandrika says, listen, I am not feeling going to this housewarming. Because Patrick ends up inviting everybody to the housewarming. Shandrika's like, mm -mm, I'm not here for it. Nope. Don't think I want to go to that. Nope. Because I don't want no more um, fisticuffs, skirmishes, or whatnot between my boyfriend and Patrick. Nope, not doing it. Back down to the restaurant the next day, um, Brian and Richard were having a conversation over at the bar. Brandon came his bitch ass over there, and now he wants to be all supervisor, um, su supervisor guy, and wants to be all managerial. You can't sit at the bar while you're an employee. And Brian was like, but weren't you at the bar yesterday? Like, once you just sit down, they're having a whole ass meal during the middle of the lunch rush. <sighs> Brandon feels like Brian is disrespecting him and being um, insubordinate. So, instead of doing what you said was your job and overseeing and managing and supervisor, you say, oh, I can't manage, I can't oversee, I can't supervise, I cannot get my people whose job it is to conform to what I say, to do what I got to do without being insubordinate. I can't make that happen because I'm a failure as a manager. So I got to go tell my boss. So now my boss who could be doing some work, doing their job, now has to come and help me do my job because I'm incompetent as a manager. So now we have Brandon who then has to take it up the ladder and go complain to Philip. Philip already don't want no parts of um brian none at all wants nothing to do with brian so if you come to philip and say anything sideways about brian he's right on top of it mm -hmm, he sure was probably was mind you in this case i don't fault brian for this now i'm not saying brian was completely right i'm not because if the rule is you ain't supposed to be at the bar you ain't supposed to be at the bar but what's good for the goose is good for the gander and you have to be the example of what you want your employees to do. And even if you can eat at the bar, why are you doing it during the middle of lunch rush? It was a mess. So he goes to Philip, and Philip just buys hook, line, and sinker into everything. Because Brandon put 20 on 10. Brian did not do all of that. Brandon went over there with his fuck shit and fuckery. See, this is why, Brandon, I had to cuss you out when I went over there to the old lady game that first time because you be with the fuck shit. I go over here and ask you how long the wait is. You say 45 minutes and two plus hours later, I'm still don't know and you rude and disrespectful. In the same way that you're rude, dismissive and disrespectful even to your, you know, um, the people who you're supposed to be supervising. That's not a, the best way to be managerial or in a supervisor or role or to manage people to be dismissive, condescending and disrespectful. That's not. And you do that, Philip does that. So now you take it up to your boss, Philip, and he buys it hook, line, and sinker. And it's like, yeah, we got to get him out of here. It's time to suspend Brian. Then they take it to Don Juan because nobody can do their job. Nobody can fulfill their duties on their level. We always taking it up to the highest levels of the chain of command. If I'm Don Juan, I'm like, why the fuck are y'all here talking to me about some bullshit that should have been discussed way below me? I don't have this kind of time. I got 49 different businesses I'm over here trying to run. And y'all bothering me with some fuck shit about somebody sitting at a goddamn bar. Get y'all fucking life in order. Matter of fact, if y'all want me to um, suspend Brian, fine. 
I will suspend Brian, but I'm going to suspend y'all monkey asses too. Because clearly y'all can't do y'all job. Just like you say Brian can't do his job, y'all can't do y'all job as managers and directors of operation. Because y'all got bullshit at my desk way up here that y'all supposed to handle down there. Make the shit make sense. Just complete incompetence. A mess. A mess. They end up with a meeting with Don Juan and Brian and Brandon. And um, Philip was completely out of order. First of all, Philip wasn't even there. So Philip explained in this whole situation as if he knows exactly what happened and exactly what went on when he was not there at all and everything is third party. Philip is doing all of the talking. Brandon ain't saying a goddamn thing. Because Brandon knows he done put 20 on 10 and halfway lied on the situation. But Philip done pounced on it. And Philip just is just going to sensationalize the whole situation and make it like it's all of this. Brandon's sitting his bitch ass over there. He's sitting his punk bitch ass over there like, mm, y'all got this. He's sitting, you know what I look, I'm going to tell you now, this going to cross some barriers out here. Brandon is doing like a whole lot of the straight men do. You got the ladies over here, the girls, the ladies over here fighting, kicking, screaming, you know, going all into hysteria over a situation that he done either lied about, sensationalized, or told false truths on, and he's over there to let y'all over there sit over there and fight over it while he's sitting down chilling. Y'all getting all heated, upset, broke down, busted, and disgusted, and he's sitting over there chilling because he done planted the seeds. And y'all done took and ran with it. And now y'all over here, you know, damn near about to tear each other um, head off while he's sitting down like this. Like on Jerry Springer when the band just sitting down while y'all over there fighting. He's sitting down like this. Y'all got it. And at the end of the day, what did Brandon do? All right, well, I'm going to go take a walk. I'll go take a walk around the restaurant, make sure everything good. Y'all got this. And he done lied. And so he put 20 on 10 on this situation. Like I said, I'm not saying Brian was completely right. But he, Brand, Brandon. Put 20 on 10. So now you got the girls in here kicking, screaming, Brian, like, wait, what are we talking about? How are we here? Philip is, you know, he's always extra, always out of order. And Don Juan is just so fed up with the whole situation. Like, why the fuck is this shit even in my desk? So it's a whole fucking shit show. They end up suspending Brian. Don Juan takes Brian outside and is going off on Brian about some bullshit that didn't even really happen like that. Off of some shit that Philip said, who wasn't there and didn't see anything. And Philip is saying something, adding 20 on 10 about a situation that Brandon brought to him. And Brandon had put 20 on 10. So now we got 40 on 10. Just a mess. Paul Brian ends up getting suspended over a situation that did not. It wasn't even a situation where you needed to be sent home for that day. Much less you talk about you suspending people. Just a mess. Just a fucking mess. But it goes to show you. It starts from the top down. Y'all allow the fuck shit. Y'all y'all are just trusting whatever people tell y'all. Y'all are verifying the goddamn thing. And it's, a, it's no wonder this place has not completely been condemned and tore down. It's poor management all over the place. Even Don Juan, who seems to be the most lucid and the most you know stable minded out of the whole clique even he handled this situation the wrong way because at no point did, did anybody try to ask brian well, what happened brian everything was just taken off of whatever philip said mind you brandon ain't say the goddamn thing philip over there just going off nobody to ask brian anything but now we make a wholesale decisions on a third party telling of something that was already a made up you know, fix it. It was just a damn mess. I don't. Nope. Fire all them hoes. Anyway, Patrick goes over to the Safari's. Um. Oh. Oh yeah. In the other conversation, Don Juan ended up having to have a conversation with Philip because he's like, "Hey, bitch." Why is it every time you got a problem with a subordinate? Oh, I ain't working with this person. Y'all gotta fire them or us. Da, da, da. At a certain point, the problem is you. You ain't gonna keep on running up in here, making ultimatums, having whole hissy fits, getting your panties in a bunch, girl don't wear thongs next time, wear some goddamn jock straps and you won't have the shit up the crack of your ass like it is every day. You're out of order, Philip. You are completely out of order. And you can be as fine as all get out, but baby, 
Mm -mm. You can take that shit down to Brazil with Felipe. But over here in the States, we're not having this fuck shit. Moving on. Patrick goes over to his girlfriend's body sculpting sh um, shop. And girlfriend had to lay down the law. Hey, bitch, Torin. Nah, we ain't doing that. Torin won't be fixing nothing in your house. Thank you, doll. Thank you, boo. I do feel like she was threatened. I don't know why something Emmy said that Torin situation. She feels a little threatened by the girls. And she was like, by the girls and the girls. Both. Because she was like, mm -mm, you don't need him helping you. I got this. We good over here. You tell him no. And then when the Shandrika situation, she said, oh yeah, I don't mind the Shandrika. Now you know full well Shandrika got a whole ass boyfriend, but you threatened by her as well. And so now, nah, she can't come either. I don't need to deal with that. Boo boo. The way your man likes to flirt with people and is the gregarious type bouncing all over the party, girl, you're going to be real insecure for a long time if this going to truly be your man. That's not going to end well. Just a mess. But she said, yeah, Shandrika came coming to this house. She is not coming to this house, woman party. I was like, ooh. Anyway, we then see they, uh, Shandrika was um, helping the ladies do some um, swim aerobics, some water aerobics. Because she's a swim coach or whatever. I guess you got to do something. You make it $12 an hour. So you got to find a way to make, you know, some income somewhere, honey. And it was real cute. You know what I'm saying? After they got out of the pool, the um, the um, the old ladies, um, they ended up discussing what, with Dominique and Candy and Shandrika what's going on at the restaurant. They talked about Brian being suspended um, and possibly terminated. Um, they, uh, Aunt Bertha came right out and said, I can't stand Philip. Is she too, the way she tooted up her whole face and said, I can't stand Philip. Ooh, girl, she don't like you, Philip. Anyway, back um, at the end of the episode, we saw Brian and Torin ended up going out to have some ice cream. And it was a moment where um, we got to see the nature of the friendship of Brian and Torin. And Brian began to open up about, I mean, they started off talking about him being suspended, but then he began to open up about some of the issues that he was, um, and struggles he was having with alcohol and drugs. And then after that, we learned that, um, he was drinking so much that he was vomiting up blood two and three times a day. Like that's some serious, um, drinking. Like he would go through whole, you know, 1.5, 75 liters of alcohol in a day. And then we learned that his sister recently committed suicide and they suspect it might've been, she drank too much alcohol and committed suicide or whatnot. But anyway, she took her own life and and it's been recently and um he's been struggling with that. The fortunate part about it is um it hasn't caused him to break his sobriety. He hasn't had a lapse or anything in his sobriety, but um it's really bothering him. And you know, they exchanged the love that they have for each other. We did get confirmation that they did have a love thing going on at some point. And um that was that. And um, I mean, it was a good conversation where you saw two friends that were genuinely, you know, trying to be there for one another. So I did like that conversation between Brian and Torin, and it went off from there. Now, listen, if y'all feel up at this point, you are not the right answer to fix whatever the problem is. At this point, Candy, fire everybody in that bitch. Everybody got to go. Everybody got to go. Everybody getting pink slips. Bring in a whole new crew. Otherwise, it's going to continue to be the shit show that it is. <sighs> that dick better be real good, Brandon, with the carrying on that you be having going on. You better have dick of death and cock of doom. I guess. Anyway, that's all I got. Yeah, free my boy, Brian. Free Brian. Y'all done did Brian so wrong. Free Brian. Brian ain't did nothing. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all. Until next time, <laughs> thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.